In the Citizens United decision last year, the five justices of the Supreme Court took a look at our federal elections and decided that the real problem is that corporations just don't have enough influence over our politics. Now, whatever you may think of this diagnosis, we are now starting to feel the results of the Supreme Court's prescription. For the first time in 100 years, we have unlimited spending out of corporate treasuries in federal elections. So let's look at what happened in 2010. The first thing that we saw there was we saw a massive rise in outside spending, the type of spending enabled by Citizens United out of corporate treasuries. Uh, we saw $280 million in independent spending, which is a doubling of the figure from 2006, and that figure is widely expected to double again in 2012. We're seeing an escalating arms race of fundraising. The second phenomenon we saw was an increase in the darkness of our politics. More than a third of the independent spending in the past election was dark. We have no idea who funded these campaign advertisements or what their agendas might be. I mean, we have some um, glimpses that are provided by independent investigations. For example, the New York Times determined that the American Future Fund, which spent $10 million running ads about, for example, the Ground Zero Mosque was in fact funded almost entirely by the ethanol industry. And the true, tar the true target of that ad campaign was to target committee members sitting on agriculture uh, policy and energy policy committees. We also saw in the last election the rise of what are called super PACs, which are PACs that are able to accept unlimited contributions from corporate treasuries and from individuals. Now, you can think of these super PACs as sort of the Godiva chocolates of fundraising. They are very rich, they are very dark, and you have no way of knowing what's inside them. Um, these super PACs poured tens of millions of dollars into the midterm elections, and in 2012, they've pledged to make that hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, why is this all a problem? Why is this um, escalation of, spent, of especially independent spending a problem for our democracy? Corporate independent spending poses a major risk of corruption because it's functioning as the new soft money. Corporations view it as an investment, a quid pro quo to buy favorable treatment from elected officials. For example, my testimony details the example of an Indian tribe in Kansas who went to a legislator and said, look, we will run an ad campaign supporting you if you will vote in favor of our casino. Uh, we also detail uh, a North Carolina example where a farmer's lobby went to a legislator, ran him a series of smear campaign ads and said, you had better switch your vote about the farm subsidies or we will run this smear campaign against you. Of course, the smear campaign had nothing to do with the farm subsidies. It was simply character assassination. It's no wonder that as uh, Senator Durbin outlined so um, dramatically, the American public is experiencing a crisis of accountability. So let's talk about how fair elections can help. Fair elections allows candidates to make a choice. Who are they going to be accountable to? Are they going to be accountable to the big money backers, the middlemen, or are they going to be accountable to the electorate at large? Um, Fair elections also incentivizes political participation. The point is not to get money out of politics. The point is to expand the field of those who have a stake in our political campaigns. Uh, Ms. Cleta, uh, Ms. Cleta Mitchell um, gave you some examples of a couple of uh, you know, instances in where there was some grassroots fundraising, but I have to tell you that is not the norm. Currently, only one out of 400 voters contributes to uh, competitive to uh, congressional elections. In the past cycle alone, lobbyists and other DC-based contributors provided almost $300 million of congressional campaign spending. That's more than the total contribution of 32 states combined. So if only one out of 400 is currently commit, uh, contributing to political campaigns, fair elections is about the other 399. Other jurisdictions who have adopted public financing have seen huge increases in the numbers of small donors who now feel that they have something at stake in our political campaigns.
Um, and I wanted just to end with a story. It's the story of an insurgent candidate who, using public, who used public financing to challenge a well-known incumbent. This candidate had broad-based popular support at the grassroots, but lacked the support of the money men of the party. During the crucial primary month of January, this candidate was down to $44,000 cash in hand. Only the infusion of a million dollars in primary matching funds that was enabled by the widespread donations this candidate had received from small donors across the country enabled this candidate to save his campaign. This candidate's name was Ronald Reagan, and he was the single largest beneficiary of presidential public financing funds in our nation's history. Fair elections translates popular support into winning campaigns without requiring candidates to sell out to big money backers. That's why we urge the committee to support this bill.